Hello everyone and welcome back to Arsenal. Now last time out uh, we played Chelsea in the Premier League and then Bristol City in the FA Cup uh, which we then beat them 2-1 and then 3-0. Since then we've done four games so we played Leicester beat them 2-0 uh, and then in the Europa League round of 16 we had the two uh, matches against Sevilla. Uh, the first one we drew one all and then the second one we won 4-0. So with that we are through to the Europa League quarter final where we will be playing Lazio so uh, that should be an interesting game. Um, but next up we have Newcastle once again after only playing them uh, two games previously in the FA Cup quarter final. Um, so it would be nice to be able to beat them. The board objective was just to reach the quarterfinal, so we've technically already done that. Um, so anything above this is sort of a bonus. Uh, but they do want us to reach the semi-final of the Europa League, so we do kind of need to be beating Lazio. Um, with the games we've played, we are still top of the league, unsurprisingly. Uh, 29 played, 71 points. Uh, City have played 28, and they've only got 65 points, so they did actually drop points. If we go to the schedule, they did lose a game. They lost 3-0 against Leicester, which, um, yeah, was pretty surprising. I did not expect them to be losing uh, against a team like Leicester, who are currently down in ninth. Um so yeah, they've dropped points, so that definitely helps us in our uh, title fight. So for this FA Cup quarterfinal match against uh, Newcastle, this is the lineup we are going for. When we played them in the Premier League uh, a couple of matches ago, we did play the 4-3-3, um, but I wasn't overly convinced with it. Obviously, we did win 1-0, but it wasn't particularly one-sided. Um, so we're going to go for the 4-2-3-1 and just try and hit them with as much attack as possible, I suppose, <laughs> and then hope that... Uh, it turns into a result. So we've got Jesus, Smith Rowe, uh, we've got Almada playing uh, as a first teamer this time. Uh, Vieira, as I was saying earlier, Scalvini can play in DM, so that's where we've got him at the moment. Uh, and then Lukonga, Tierney, uh, White, Tomiyasu, Ramsdale. It's not the best uh, lineup that we possibly could have, but most of the guys we would normally play uh, are out of fitness. You see, Odegaard is out of fitness, so is Ingenko, uh, Saka, um, Xhaka is got a bit of an injury so he's on the bench but if we can avoid playing him we will um so yeah it says limited to a maximum of 75 minutes of action so if if we need to bring him on uh in in placement of scalvini then we will um but obviously we'll have to keep an eye out on his fitness for that and immediately not even like two minutes has happened and it says jesus looks like he might have suffered a pulled hamstring and he's already out of fitness um it's probably worth replacing him just because I think our season could be ruined if Jesus has another injury. It was bad enough when he was out uh, for a little bit before. So we're going to replace him for Martinelli, which historically he's not played very well in the striker role. But like I say, we literally don't have anyone else that can play there, really. Um, so we're going to swap him out and that uses one of our subs already. Um, Ten minutes in, not too much is happening. Uh, one shot each at the moment. But we do have our first highlight and it is Newcastle. On a corner, he puts it in, hits the cr uh, the woodwork, almost goes in, uh, but we are saved from that. So it's still nil nil at the moment, but they are they've currently got the match momentum here. As yet another highlight starts with Newcastle Trippier onto uh, Saint Maxime here, and we manage to get the ball back, and it just goes in. Ramsdale makes the save, but it hits the woodwork the wrong way and goes in off the post. And that is 1-0 to Newcastle already, only 16 minutes in. Maybe we should have gone for the 4-3-3. This is not looking good at the moment. Another highlight starts with them, but we do manage to regain possession here. Sammy de Conga onto White. Can we push it forward onto Scalvini in his uh, newly found role? Smith Rowe onto Tierney on the wing. Onto Almada. Can we put it into uh, Martinelli? No. Nope. Almada just takes a shot himself. We are back level at one all we have once again another highlight Almada onto uh, Vieira there but unfortunately he sends it above the net uh, and that is not a goal for us another highlight we've got loads of these here Newcastle almost put it in now in terms of this save obviously uh, the beta technically ends on November the 8th so my plans for the main save are a journeyman so we're going to be starting sort of in the Vanarama south uh, and then working our way up seeing where we end up um, but in terms of this save do we just do one season? Do we do two? Do we do three? Do we try and start the um, the journeyman pretty much as soon as the beta is finished? Let me know uh, down in the comments uh, and then we'll see what we can do. Vieira 
not having a great game on the right wing. So we're going to bring in Saka, who should be able to play the rest of this match. Uh, and then Sambit Conga is playing OK, but he is out of fitness and he is on a yellow. So uh, we'll bring Xhaka on, who should be able, who should be fine. Um, maybe swap out Tommy Asu as well, but we haven't really got anyone to swap him for. Maybe Saliba? I don't know how well he plays as a right back role um, but we'll put him there anyway but hopefully uh, this should be it for now and then we'll keep one sub available in case we need to use it for an injury a little bit later on so Newcastle have got themselves a free kick from out the box and you see St Maxime is actually injured and uh, yeah they get ahead to it but once again they're not able to do anything with it uh, we're going to encourage them and they suggest swapping Tierney for Zinchenko probably a good idea to be honest um We'll do that. Can we also do Smith Rowe? I, yeah, no, we can't. Okay, that will be our last substitution then. We have 10 minutes to get this next goal. Otherwise, I think it goes to extra time. Um, but 83 minutes in, Newcastle have got themselves a highlight here. On to Wilson. Gabriel gets the ball back. On to Xhaka. Through to Saka. Can he put it through in the middle? Doesn't look like it. We get the ball back. On to Almada. Um, but he's not able to score this time round like he did earlier in the match. We're still able to control possession relatively well here, as I say, as we get tackled. Uh, Wilson runs it up the wing. And um, who was that? Xhaka just does a slide tackle for some reason. He could have just taken that ball and Willock puts it in the net and we are down. We are now losing this match with five minutes to go to try and find um, the equaliser here. I don't think we're going to do it. I think we're going to have lost the FA Cup quarterfinal to Newcastle. And that confirms it. So uh, we won't be winning the FA Cup this year. We've still got the Europa League, but it would have been nice to have been able to beat them. Newcastle are the sort of team we should be beating, uh, especially in the FA Cup. But oh well, the board won't be too unhappy because, like I say, uh, th that was their objective anyway. And Jesus is injured for two weeks. How many games does he miss because of that then? Uh, where are we? We're on the what a 19th, which is here. So one, two... Um, okay, we're actually not going to miss any games because it seems like we're on we're on international duty. So, assuming he's able to be back uh, by the Fulham game here, Jesus might not actually miss any games. So, not as bad as it otherwise could have been. The uh, next gen list, the 50 best wonder kids in football, has been released, and we have three of them. Uh, and it's also reminded me that I had actually already sorted out our striker issue and just completely forgot. Um, so the first one is Scalvini, who managed to get number 13 on the list, so almost in the top 10. Uh, and yeah, I mean, he, he is going to end up pretty good. He's already a three star. Uh, I mean, I think he was like two or two and a half star when we bought him. So he's, he's, he's definitely improving. Um, you see on the reports that he, he, he's going to be pretty decent. He could be five star. Apparently, his best role is actually anchor as a defensive midfielder, which is interesting. Um but I think I'm probably going to be planning to play him in centre-back. Uh, yeah, this shows there. He's gone from two and a half to, well, I mean, it still says two and a half, but three star he is. And then Marcus Leonardo is the guy that is going to sort out our striker issues. I forgot that we had bought him and then sent him straight back out on loan. Would have been useful if we hadn't. Um, but he's been playing pretty well on his loan. He's had 11 appearances and out of those 11 appearances had nine goals with an average rating of 7.37. So he's not been uh, he's not been playing too badly at all. Uh, he's currently two and a half star, and he's also got a five star potential. Um, so yeah, I think we'll be all right for the backup striker role. And then the other person that we've got on the list is Marcelo Flores, which we didn't buy, as far as I'm aware. Um, he must have come through our youth system. Um, but he is out on loan to Oviedo in Spain uh, and he is two star of only a three star potential ability. So he's, yeah, he's, he's not really that great, but that's why he's number 42 on the list. Um, but having these two guys is probably going to set Arsenal up for the future. Um, because even if they don't end up using them, they're going to be worth a mint. I mean, this guy's already worth up to 39 million and he's only 19. Um, and then, I mean, Scalfini is 19 years old and he's worth anywhere between 96 to 116 million. I mean, we paid a pretty penny for him. We paid 39 and a half, but it's worth it for a player this good. So we've seen through many, many days and it is finally time for our game against Fulham. Uh, in other news, Leicester have sacked Brendan Rodgers, something they seem to be unwilling to do in real life for whatever reason. Um, but they have sacked him. 
uh, for poor league position and they've currently got a caretaker manager. In the Premier League, the other teams have played their games. So this is how the table stands. Fulham all the way down in 19th. So they are definitely a team we should be beating. Um, and in terms of the title fight, obviously ourselves and Man City, both on 29 games now and they're on 68 points. So even if we lose this, we'll still be top, but we really need to not to be dropping points against teams like Fulham. Uh, so we'll go into it. In terms of the team uh, that we'll be fielding, Jesus is available, uh, but he is recommended to only have 75 minutes. So at some point in the second half, we're probably going to have to swap him out uh, for Martinelli, but we'll see what happens. Uh, and then we're back to our sort of normal team. We've got Smith, Rowe, Saka, uh, Partey as well. Uh, and then we've got Aaron's in right back because where is uh, Tommy Yasu? He's... Hmm, we haven't even picked him as a sub, weirdly. Um, but Max Aaron's has technically played better, but I would rather have someone like Tommy Asu that we know is going to play well, uh, and then we'll have him out there. Emma Smith Rowe is apprehensive for some reason, and the past few games, no matter what I say, I just can't motivate these guys. It's weird. So, what I normally do is just shout encourage at them immediately, and it always works and just gives them, uh, they're always fired up by the feedback anyway. So, but not for very long, to be honest. Uh, Sammy Conga already on a yellow. 18 minutes in, we've had three shots, but nothing has really happened. Um, they are playing a 4-3-3, which I have found is quite difficult to uh, get through when you're playing a 4-2-3-1. I don't know why, it just is. Thomas almost gets it in. I don't know if any of you have watched actual real-life Arsenal highlights, but I think uh, in the game against Nottingham Forest on the weekend, um, Thomas did a fantastic shot, and that was pretty much going to be a replica of that if we managed to get it in, but it is Half time and it is nil nil. I think Fulham are probably playing pretty defensive. Maybe that's why we're not able to get through. Um, but I'm going to say I'm not happy with them. Maybe we can switch to a four three three. I've always found that playing a four three three against a four three three kind of works. I don't know why, um, but I don't know. Maybe we'll we'll stick with this. Maybe we'll just tell them to step up more a bit. Try and just go a bit more attacking. The only problem though is when you go more attacking, you are obviously vulnerable to counter-attacks and we don't want that um, but half time is anyone playing like awfully it doesn't look it I mean Jesus isn't playing particularly well um, we just need them to do something and Odegaard onto White almost gets it in the goal uh, against Leno our old keeper but he's not able to do so on this occasion once again we have another highlight Zinchenko manages to uh, get the ball onto Thomas whips it in and Leno has to make another save Leno must be on a mad rating right now, the amount of saves he's made. 50 minutes in, Odegaard whips it in, Saliba gets ahead to it, and it's in the net, but they are going to be checking it for offside. And uh, it's not offside, the goal is awarded. We are finally 1-0 up after what seemed like a million chances, but to be honest, we haven't even had that good XG. And, oh, they uh, have immediately gone to one of the world's most defensive formations. I mean, look at this. There's Look at this gap between the DMs and uh, their guys up ahead. That is just insane. <laughs> You'd have thought, you know, going 1-0 down, they might try and go a bit more attacking, try and get us on the counter. But no, they've just done the world's most defensive formation. We seem to be happy to just keep passing it amongst ourselves, but a nice long ball over to Saka. And that's 2-0. I, I don't think Fulham are coming back from this. I'd be very upset if they did. We see here Jesus onto White, onto Lukonga, and then he just smacks it over the top of all the defenders. Saka runs through and then plants it nicely in the bottom left of the goal. Um, where are we now? 64 minutes in. Let's make some subs. Who's not been playing particularly well? Jesus. Uh, we'll swap him out for Martinelli. Don't want to be causing Jesus any more injury anyway. Uh, Tommy Asu. Actually not playing overly well. So we'll put Max Aarons on. Uh, and then... Samuel Conger is playing amazingly, but he is on a yellow and we really can't afford anyone to be getting any reds at the moment. So we'll swap him out for El Nenny. And that should do it for the time being. And El Nenny would have preferred to stay on the bench. Wow. That is not the sort of attitude we want from our players. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's very unhappy because he preferred to have not played. We've swapped Udegaard for Almada, and I was going to say that's probably it, but 89 minutes in, and we do have a highlight. Zinchenko over to Sacco, gets ahead to it, onto Smith Rowe, who puts it into the net, and that is 3-0. And that is the 10th goal for Smith Rowe this season. There's one thing I have noticed with our team. We haven't really had just 
that one person that's scoring all the goals. Everyone in the top third of the pitch is contributing very nicely to the goals and that puts us, well, it, we're still first, obviously, but I mean, even if you look at the goal difference, we've got 52 goal difference. Compare that to like City, who's got 35, Liverpool 41. What's Haaland doing? Hmm? Why is he not getting in the goals? I mean, well, he probably is. Where is he? Erling Haaland, there we go. He's, I mean, to be fair, he's had 30 goals in 28 appearances. They can only rely on him to score the goals. That's the thing. Whereas if we look at our guys, everyone's been putting in the goals. I mean, Jesus, 31 goals, 33 appearances. Martinelli's got 15. Odegaard, 13. Saka, 11. Smith Rowe, 10. We can't count Leonardo. He's out on um, loan. But, I mean, even Vieira's had eight. Parties had six. Everyone, pretty much everyone has had a goal. But yeah, that marks the end of this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that fantastic stuff. Uh, and we'll see you next time, probably for the games against City and Spurs.